Good morning and welcome back to Darwin. Here we are on another bright sunny day. We're on Stokes Hill Wharf, uh, which is part of the waterfront precinct uh, down here in Darwin Harbour. So we're just going to go for a walk through, show you the various eateries and uh, where the dock two and three uh, is where you can join uh, the various little um, catamarans and sailing boats that do the afternoon and sunset cruises. So we've just parked in the car park. Uh, we've got a Royal Flying Doctor display here and uh, there's a 3D movie experience from the bombing of uh, Darwin Harbour in 1942. Apparently Darwin Harbour is bigger than Sydney Harbour. Okay, here's an old photograph of what it looked like some years ago. And, um, so on occasion it is a, a working wharf when you get vessels like the uh, Queen Mary uh, pulling in here. But uh, generally they will go to the Fort Hill Wharf, which I'll show you at the end. So yeah, beautiful calm morning. It's reasonably warm. It's, this is about 11.30 in the morning, so not a lot of activity going on down here. Um, got your ticketing office here. Most people do book online um, and uh, it does get very busy in the uh, dry season, the peak of the tourist season uh, for doing the sunset cruise and maybe a little fishing or the high speed uh, boat which takes you around into the mangrove area. So this is, as you can see, Dock 2. Dock 3 is a little bit further around to the left. And there's a whole range of different uh, cruises that you can go on. Alright, it looks like the jet skis are here. A lot of people like to go for the scenic ride right around to East Point. Now we do have crocodile sharks and stingers in the water so the tip is don't fall off. A lot of fun though. Right, it looks like the uh, guys are setting up for the evening cruise and tomorrow being the bombing of Darwin they will probably be taking groups out uh, to visit the various sites where there are sunken ships from uh, World War II, 1942, uh, bombing of Darwin. Alright, in the evening this would be packed solid and that is most evenings as well. I bring uh, my family down here from time to time to enjoy either just fish and chips or a lot of different Asian dishes. Uh, really nice Thai uh, takeaway place here on the right. Probably do the best Pad Ki Miao uh, that I've ever had. But there's a whole range and we'll walk through the other side, the port side and the starboard side as well. being this early in the morning uh, not all of them are open but in the evening you'll have an 
excellent selection. Kim's fish and chips here right in front. All sorts of fish, prawns, and uh, that's licensed as well so you can grab a beer uh, while you're enjoying the sunset and the meal. Just on that note, the fish in the Northern Territory or any seafood, uh, it is an anti-government regulation that they must state its origin. Like barramundi, the local barramundi uh, is fantastic. They must state if it is local or if it is uh, imported. So it gives you a bit of confidence that you are getting a genuine product. Indian place there probably does the best butter chicken uh, that we've come across. just see some of these apartments uh, across the water there that's at the uh, waterfront precinct. We've got the lagoon and the wave pool in there. Right, uh, here's an excellent little bar. Got all your soft drinks. One of the best little bars with the best range of beers that I've ever seen. Everything, Bintang, um, VB, uh, whatever you like. So we'll just go for a little walk around the corner. And that's the Brolga. Uh, this image is used on a lot of uh, tourism brochures and advertising. That's a palm frond down in the water, it's not a crocodile. Alright now, here we have Crustaceans, uh, which is an actual restaurant which opens in the evening and they will bring all the chairs and tables outside here so you can catch the breeze. If you find it a little bit too warm, you can sit inside in the aircon. So this is the end of the Stokes Hill Wharf and what we can see across here with a uh, I think that's an Australian Navy ship which is uh, berthed there at Fort Hill Wharf. Looks like a couple of these tugs are heading out to do some work. We've got two gas plants on the other side of the harbour and uh, they require these guys to guide them through the reasonably narrow channels uh, to get them back out of the harbour, out to sea. This is Dock 3, um, so you can just walk either around or down through the series of gates to get here.
the sun dancer in front of us is quite popular. Um, if you want to watch the sunset, have a few drinks. Alright, looks like these guys have just been out in uh, one of these little dinghies that you can I think you hire the guy and all the equipment and he'll just take you out uh, try and catch something and you and you normally will I think there is some arrangement with one of the fish and chip uh, shops that uh, they will uh, for a fee uh, cook but if you've caught something nice I'll cook it for your for your lunch. So yeah, this is a, an excellent facility that the locals and tourists do enjoy uh, getting down here just for a nice breeze in the afternoon. Um, you can come down any time and just relax and hang out. Just watch the various uh, boats come and go. And uh, something that the kids like to do in the evening, if you've got any chips left over, uh, you can uh, throw the chips into the water and you will get a lot of different varieties of fish come to the surface to eat the chips. It's also a good I dear to uh, keep a, a good eye or a hold onto the uh, toddlers as there's no actual fence uh, on this uh, wharf here. Alright, looks like this guy's about to head over and help out the other tugs I think there's either one or two uh, gas carrying ships in there at the moment. So they must be getting ready to leave and they will head straight up to Japan where all of this gas will go. Okay, so we'll just uh, head back to the car park. Uh, this is also a drop-off area for the various shuttle buses and taxi and Uber uh, pickups. This is a mural just here in the car park, uh, just showing the scenes of what might have occurred uh, when the Japanese took everyone by surprise and bombed on the 19th of February. 1942 okay so that's it for today uh, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye